welcome to episode three of Hello to My Fatherland. Today we will be visiting the beautiful town of Hoi An, where I will be staying with my homestay family for one week in the small village of Kam Tan. This is where I learned how to be a child again, learned how to be carefree, and just enjoyed the simple pleasures of life, like bike rides every morning, playing with the animals, just being with this sweet little boy, and just meeting wonderful, wonderful people. We will begin with a tour of the secrets of Hoi An, such as the oldest noodle factory, learn how bean sprouts are grown, and see just how valuable a single grain of rice is. Along the way, we will meet people who work 365 days except for maybe just one day, which usually isn't even their birthday. And you'll be able to taste the love and care and hard work. And there also seems to be less of a language barrier than I thought. Um, many people always say universal language is music, but it really is also food. It gives way for understanding that's joined through simple nods and eyes that speak. Cheers, cheers. Cheers, cheers. Cheers, cheers. Cheers, cheers. is because of the well water is only found here yeah. which is used for the steaming when you make the noodles and so this is the uh, mung bean yeah uh, the cassava cassava and uh, mung bean in the middle turn it into banana leaf mung bean and coconut dessert cake Go. <laughs> <laughs> All 
It is impossible to share my story without mentioning my father's. Originally from Saigon, I had no idea where it, he came from or where his family was from until I came to this town of Hoi An and I met my tour guide, Harry. He took me to this place where it says Chao Long, big market, and back then when Hoi An was a bustling town of merchants, many Chinese merchants came to Vietnam and eventually they would go to the Mekong Delta where it's a lot bigger. It was really amazing to just be able to learn about the, the culture and the history and being here on this tour. We are looking for my very first Aoyai. You get to first choose the fabric and then it takes about two days and then it will um, Taylor, make it, and I'll come back and I'll show you guys the result. I'm thinking about getting a red color or yellow color. Um, we'll see what fabric we get. The coolest experience was being able to go to a tailor shop, pick out a print of what Ao Yai color I wanted and just trying on the beautiful fabrics and then I went the next day and surprise surprise it was fit perfectly to me and it was the most amazing experience. Now I have my own personal Ao Yai that I can wear in Vietnamese weddings or back at home with my family or simply out and about. And then I had the awesome experience to do a photo shoot with the tailor's friend and this was super fun to just go around town and take pictures. Definitely recommend it is a one thing that everyone needs to do. the photo shoot and I'm getting some lunch by myself just to relax and recharge, have some time to myself. I'm at this beautiful restaurant called Secret Garden and after this I will meet some friends from Hanoi. They are two doctors traveling together. Um, I met on a tour bus to Halong Bay and we're going to meet later for dinner. I just want to say Hoi An is the best city. It, everyone is so kind. It's my favorite city in the whole world now. I consider it my home now, even though I've only been here for a few days. Um, it's been beautiful. Thanks. Some appetizers at this beautiful place called Secret Garden. <laughs> I have lost track of what days they are, but I am in this super cute white sundress that I found at the town yesterday. And some of my friends from Hanoi came um, and we met with some new people. And I might have to go back to Korea for a Samsung commercial. It is crazy what life has brought to me recently. <laughs> um, but then after that, I want to definitely come back um, yeah, I am going to use today as a rest day and just go to the cafe, get some writing, kind of just relax and take things a little bit slower today. Um, and yeah, I will see you guys. this morning. Yeah. 
No. And then you have to pull it out. Pick an apple. Check it. Pick it up. Yum Ah! So it's all the way up there. Why did the chicken cross the road? <laughs> because it had to get to the cow. It's saying, come here, best friend. Oh, he's actually going. As I set off to the next city with no plan for the first time in my life, I feel a sense of worry and hesitation. Traveling solo is fun until you long for someone to experience it with. I think of my dad who traveled not just to a new city, but to a new country completely unfamiliar and unknowing. How happy and joyful he must have been when he was finally able to bring his family over with him. Today and each day, when I feel afraid of new beginnings, I will try to exude just a little bit of that courage into my journey. I know it isn't over and that it isn't time to go home yet. What else will I discover? Who else will I meet? As my energy dwindles, it becomes filled with new memories and dreams that I wish forever to play in my mind. What a blessing it is to encounter places and people who make saying goodbye feel so hard. May I always remember the life I have seen and the true meaning of joy through that little boy's smile, the brown-eyed baby in the alley, the many businessmen and women hard at work each day, and through the beautiful town of Hoi An. Last meal together for a while until I come back, right? So I'm leaving, um, all packed up, ready to go. My next destination is Ho Chi Minh, Saigon, where my dad is from, Talon District Number 6. Headed there today for a few days, about to say goodbye. Really sad, it was such a wonderful experience. Most beautiful family and home and way of life. And it's really hard to leave, but on to the next. <laughs> Kong Kong, I can't take that with me. <laughs> no, 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 Kong Kong. To those of you watching and to Hoi An and to everyone I met along the way, I just want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Um, and if you're here, I want to leave by saying this. Kong Kong, the little boy, literally translates into no in English. But in Buddhism, it means the state of void, emptiness. The purpose of people's life is always looking for the happiness out there, whether it's a good house, a beautiful car, money, or lovers. But when you're in the state that you don't have everything, but you're still happy, or you don't even want something else, or wish to have something on your mind or in your mind, it's definitely the true state of happiness. So wherever you are watching this video, I hope that it inspires you to enjoy the simple things in your daily life and to look at your family members and your friends and go outside and see the world. Thank you for watching. See you in my next episode where we will be in Ho Chi Minh City. I can just trust you. I don't need to 